Hey folks, welcome back. A little while ago, we had a video using some math to come up with Pokemon's 19th type, and y'all had a lot to say. I loved making that video and had a lot of fun with the math, so I wanted to follow it up here by taking a bunch of y'all's suggestions from the comments section. Without getting too much into the nitty gritty and recapping all of the math, the basic idea of that video was that we can figure out the overall strength of each type by solving this pretty basic matrix vector equation. T is the type chart, and solving for x gives us a vector telling us which types are the weakest and which types are the strongest. It is not crucial to understand this math exactly, but if you're curious, in this form, x is called an eigenvector and k is called an eigenvalue. If we go through the math, we see that this is the ranking of the existing types, and many, many of y'all pointed out that this looked wrong in so many ways. Why the heck are rock and ice the second and third best types? Why are fairy and steel ranks so low? What is Dragon doing all the way at the bottom there? There's clearly something missing here, and as many of you correctly pointed out, it's because we only explicitly took into account offensive relationships, i.e. how effective an attack of a certain type is against a Pokemon of a different type. I'll quickly note here that this math does implicitly take defensive relationships into account, but only by virtue of a type with many resistances, like Steel, getting to slightly temper down the offensive strength of every other type. What we really want is an approach that explicitly takes into account defensive relationships, i.e. resistances, alongside those offensive relationships. In the comments, there was a lot of good proposed ways on how to combine offensive and defensive relationships, but I think the best and most elegant one was in this comment by Josh7627, which reframes the problem by asking what is the probability that a Pokemon of some type X beats a Pokemon of any other type Y, and we define this probability using the values in the type chart. Take two types like water and fire. Water is super effective against fire, and also resists fire. So to come up with a reasonable definition of probability water beats fire, we can divide 2 by the sum of 2 and 0.5, which gives us 0.8. And by symmetry, the probability that fire beats water would be 0.2. Now consider trying to work this out for water and ground. Water is again super effective against ground, but crucially does not resist ground. So we calculate probability water beats ground as 2 divided by the sum of 2 and 1, which is only 0.67 definitely lower than the 0.8 we calculated before. Simply put, we find that while water is super effective against both fire and ground, i.e. the offensive relationship is the same, it is more dominant over fire when we factor in the defensive relationships. This also works really well with immunities. For asymmetric immunity relationships, for example fighting and ghost, we see that probability ghost beats fighting is 1, and probability fighting beats ghost is 0. The only place we run into a small issue is with symmetric immunity relationships, like with normal and ghost. Technically, we would get both probability ghost beats normal and probability normal beats ghost as 0 divided by the sum of 0 and 0, which is technically undefined, but if we think about it in context for a second, we see that both of these should really be 0.5, since this is basically a stalemate between two types that mutually cannot touch each other. So now, instead of looking at the raw type chart T, we have a new matrix P of the same shape, which contains these pairwise probabilities. And crucially, this matrix P encodes both the offensive and defensive relationships between all of the types. So now, now we should be able to find the eigenvectors of this new matrix P, and that should give us a much, much more sane ranking of the existing types, and this is what we get. Now, I should preface by saying this still won't be perfect, after all, Pokemon is a really complex game and we haven't even talked about things like stats and abilities and items, weathers, terrains, all this other stuff, but I think that there's a lot more right about this ranking than the ranking from the beginning of this video. Steel and Fairy are near the top where they belong, interestingly with Ghost sharing that status. Bug and Ice are near the bottom, which makes a lot of sense, although with Rock kind of still in the middle of the pack, likely due to its many offensive advantages. Now we can appeal to the same approach as before, where we think about the potential offensive and defensive relationships of a new 19th type and see what keeps the game balanced. We're again going to make a few changes here based on y'all's comments from the last video. First, I think there was a really good argument that some folks made that our goal should not be to keep all of the types as balanced to each other as possible. After all, the goal of Pokemon is not to have 18 or 19 types that are all interchangeable in terms of utility. Some types are naturally worse than others, and that's okay, it's part of the game. 
So really what we want to do is introduce a 19th type that ensures that the game does not become way more unbalanced than it already is. Second, there was a lot of discourse that I was overly restrictive on what values could go into the new type's offensive and defensive relationships. So we're going to open it way up and get rid of the enforcement that the defensive relationships have to be the reciprocals of the offensive ones. We're also going to allow for way more super effective, half effective, ineffective, and even immunities than we did before. Now this all sounds great, but it comes with one huge issue. The space of possibilities blows up like crazy. There is absolutely no way we can do an exhaustive search over all of these possibilities. But we're not giving up. Instead, we're going to appeal again to a cool bit of math called Bayesian optimization. Sounds complicated and please don't check out yet, but all it means is that we don't search the entire search space and instead proceed very smartly as follows. We start by setting some random values for the new type. Then through this initial series of random guesses, we learn more about which settings keep the game somewhat balanced and which don't. We learn where are the most promising places to search in the search space and which are the less promising places to search and update our search accordingly. In this smart searching way, we hone in on the best offensive and defensive relationships for this new type, even if we never get to the absolute best one. One quick note is that we did keep the assumption that the new type is half effective against itself, mostly to keep the constraints on the new row, independent of the constraints on the new column, making this all technically a lot more feasible. And so, and so, taking into account both the offensive and defensive relationships, using way more relaxed constraints than we did before, and using a smart search over that much bigger space of possibilities, we get that the actual new best type in the game has the following offensive and defensive relationships. Offensively, this new type hits Fighting, Steel, and Fairy for super effective damage, hits Psychic and Dragon for half effective damage, and cannot hit Bug. Defensively, we see that Dragon hits our new type for super effective damage, Electric, Fighting, and Psychic hit it for half effective damage, and Grass and Fairy cannot touch our new type. Before we talk about what cool new type canonically fits here, we see that this already makes a lot more sense, even if you don't agree with each and every single one of these. The new type is super effective against Steel and Fairy, serving as checks to what many consider the two best types in the game right now. It's also immune to Fairy moves. There's an interesting relationship with Dragon here, generally considered to be a pretty good type. It doesn't hit Dragon very hard, and in turn Dragon hits this type really hard. Not sure I totally agree with this, but... We do know that Dragon got a nerf with the introduction of Fairy, so perhaps this is a correction to that correction. Finally, my absolute favorite part of this is that Bug is totally immune to this new type, making this Bug's first immunity. The other stuff I didn't talk about is a little bit harder to justify, like the relationships to Psychic and Fighting and Grass, though it is cool to see only the second pair of types which are mutually not very effective against each other. So there's the full set of relationships for our hypothetical new type, and I'd love to get your thoughts on those. But now the fun part. We get to actually theorycraft on what canonical new type fits these relationships well. I would never be able to fit one new elegant type to all 12 of these relationships because my brain just does not work like that, but consider it homework to the viewer and bonus points if you're able to find something that works with all of these. Instead, what I'm going to do is the typical Pokemon cop-out thing and take a few of these relationships that are solid and assume there's some wishy-washy relationships for the others. Hey, I'm not the first one to do it. I'm looking at you, Bug being resisted by Ghost for absolutely no reason. So here's the relationships we'll be anchoring off of as we come up with the new type. And staring at these relationships, what I eventually came up with was, drumroll please, the Titan type. Relating very simply to supermassive, titanic, gigantic Pokemon. There's a bit of existing lore around this with Dynamax in Generation 8 and Titan Pokemon in Generation 9. My justifications here are that Titans can definitely bend steel, just being super strong and super large, fairy magic just doesn't work at that massive scale, and bugs are just too small to be affected. Think of a giant foot coming down on a teeny tiny creature, there's a good chance that the bug would be just fine, kind of just sinking into the earth. While dragons are smaller than titans typically, Dragon's increased agility and ferocity would be a match to take down a titan. Think vision, air cannonballing into giant man. Trees and plants are also no match when a gigantic titan comes strolling along. I like this type because it works really well as a secondary type on a lot of existing Pokemon, like I could see Satitan and Avalug being ice titan types, could see Waylord being a water titan type, Torterra being a grass titan type, Regigigas being a normal titan type, etc. 
But let's round out the video with my rendition of a brand new Titan Pokemon, which is actually going to be a dual electric Titan Pokemon called Gravitrode, which is for gravity and electrode. Here's my rendition of Gravitrode with a couple of little Voltorbs I put down there for scale. And keep in mind I was a math major and not an art major when you go in the comments and criticize my drawing here. Gravitrode has the new signature ability Event Horizon, where its gravity is so immense that on the first turn of being switched in, it draws all single target moves to itself. This is clearly geared towards doubles and functions kind of like a follow me or a rage powder, but as an ability. It also has the new signature Titan-type move called Tectonic Tear, a 100 base power, 90% accurate move that doubles in base power if the target is heavier than the user. Titan Pokemon are obviously going to be really, really heavy, so this power boost is really meant to counter other Titans. Let me know what y'all think about the new Titan type and if you have any other types that fit even better. Thanks so much for the active comments section on the last video there, and it really helped me to fix some of these shortcomings, and I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are on where we should go from here. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see all of you wonderful people next time.